came in there. Yeah, good kidding. afternoon and welcome to CRM and Student Manager. That was a long time coming up again. <laughs> Laurie, good to have you here, and again, we thank everyone for signing in and joining us for a late December, mid-December, I guess, session, kind of before the, uh, the hubbub ends and the hubbub begins, so uh, we're excited that you're here. I think Laurie's going to turn the panel over to me, and we'll begin talking about CRM and student manager and registration software and how you might use your registration package. And, most of you here today are using Student Manager from a product from Aceware. We do have a few guests. We've invited uh, uh, other folks to set in on, and so we'll be talking about things in general as well. So um, again, let me just get one more tool set up so I have all of my goodies ready to go, and we'll get started. I always like, Lori's always uh, shy. She doesn't get the pictures, but I always like to give credit to Lori Thompson, our webmaster, uh, webinar master and mistress, and uh, yours truly here to share with you some thoughts on CRM. Uh, the plan for the day, and I, again, we'll ask in a minute about CRM history and all, but a lot of folks, and, and I think me included, have this idea that CRM is some magical mystery kind of component. We're going to try to maybe poke some holes in it and get you a more realistic view of what this is all about talk a bit about commercial CRM options, and then kind of our thinking as far as why we think there are some really good reasons for trying to use your registration system. And again, for most of you, that's student manager to do CRM. And then we'll talk about how, how we do it. Uh, so again, if you're not doing CRM with manager, uh, that will be part of it. And then certainly get into questions and answers. We hope to try to answer some questions, get you started on your plan for using CRM inside a, a registration system. So let's talk about the mystery. Well, uh, again, uh, CRM it almost has this magical or myst myst mystical quality about unicorns and magic bullets. If we only had CRM, then everything would be better. We'll talk about that. Math. Uh, others might think CRM, it's a matter of having the formula, and you plug in number X, and you plug in number Y, and that gives you, gives you the answer. Again, not quite sure I'm going to uh, buy that. Certainly, analyt analysis and tracking is part of it, getting the right numbers in, but I think there's more to that. And I guess this is where we would drop, and that is that we think and I think most uh, of the literature would say it's really a method. It's almost more of a philosophy or a mindset as far as how you're tracking information about your customers. Having a plan, having a system in place as far as how you do this. So I think we had a couple of poll questions. Did we get the one on about, Lori, about whether or not you have salespeople, or is that going to be a yes-no question or hand up the question? Did get that? Hang on a second, and I'll fire it up. All right, we're going to ask a couple, uh, get a couple of poll questions in for you to get some feedback. So I kind of know who's here in the list, and you have the one about the staff. Yes, about the uh, staff who do sales, and uh, let's kind of find out what kind of an operation you are there. I know several of you uh, by virtue of being customers, but give us an idea of the folks setting in. And I love watching the numbers come through here because it starts okay. out that it's almost, almost always it starts out 100% one way or the other. <laughs> All right, so take a second, fill it in, and Lori, while they're doing this, if you could give me an audience attendee list view. Uh, I can do that. Uh, yeah. All right, so we'll give you five more seconds here to answer that, and Lori, uh, tell us what. Uh, tell us what. Uh, Tell us what the numbers are. What say the numbers on this? About 65% say that everybody pitches in. All right. Remaining 35% are very lucky indeed. They have they a, do have a staff, staff member. member. All right. It is a sales. All right. Well, that's, uh, and again, as part of the process, and they may already have that. Now, one of the dilemmas about CRM, and I think this is perhaps a jaded approach, is it? but people think, well, CRM, is, a, is there a way we can rip off more of their money? You know, and certainly uh, we, we all are in the business of covering costs, and we're hoping to do that. But it really is, of course, customer relationship management. And I think the big deal, the big, big deal in this process is 
the relationship you have with that particular person and how that relationship might help you learn more about them and how you can then, uh, again, put that together. So getting information from all, this is, this is now back to more of a textbook definition. Uh, from all data sources within, okay, you can read that. I don't need to read it to you. So again, let's take a look at that again and highlight some elements. Um, number one, okay, information, data sources in your organization, and that idea of a holistic view of whether it's a prospect, if you're a salesperson making calls, or working with a current student in terms of providing services to them and in real time. And again, this is really, in my thinking, what is the ultimate CRM component, customer relationship management. Okay, so what's, and, and that's important why? Well, presumably you know it's why, it's, you know it's important, that's why you're here, but basically the idea behind the whole issue of keeping data in a place available is it allows you your people, whether you're in sales, you're in registration, doing a registration, dealing with the student who's got an issue or a question, to make the decision that's going to help serve that student. And, and again, whether it's a prospect who's looking at a product of yours or somebody who's bought it and, and are trying to get some help. Again, uh, you know, why do you do it? Well, if you're interested in better service, more efficient way of serving your students, that's the whole, if you would, kind of bottom line of CRM. Now, I'll, uh, we could get into discussions of this and the, the variation, the levels, the degree of CRM. It's kind of like how religious are you related to CRM? And, and, and there are certainly, uh, you can make that the holy grail quest and, uh, or, or put that in if you're running out of time, how much time you've got available. But that's going to be for another discussion. So. Uh, what's out there? This is kind of in the business. Uh, there are lots and lots of customized CRM approaches. Uh, some of you might have some of these. Salesforce, maybe one of the big ones. Sugar CRM, Zoho, Sage, Microsoft, Leadmaster, dozens and dozens more. Uh, there's actually a website, CRM Software Review, that claims to review 40 different packages. So there's, it's not to lack for plenty of options out there. Now, these are more specialized systems that we're looking at here. There are also ERP systems. This would be enterprise software elements with the CRM component. And certainly you'll note some names here that are familiar. SAP, Oracle, NetSuite. These are systems that have basically programs, software that can run a large, large organization and have CRM components. And there's something else we can't forget. Speaking of big kids, student manager. And again, this is what we'd like to say is that the question in this whole discussion is, is it registration software and CRM? Or is it really registration software really represents a way for you to do customer relationship management by, again, utilizing the elements in your basic system and whether your system provides for that or in the case of Aceware, you really take advantage of the tools that we give you to give you maybe CRM light to help you serve and uh, or track information about your students and prospects and be able to serve them. Um, again, as uh, we, we didn't get a chance to do this at the beginning, but if you've got questions, your, your way to answer que or to ask questions is to type them in the text uh, down at the bottom uh, of your uh, GoToMeeting window panel. Again, if you're new to GoToMeeting, there is a hide control panel arrow up on the upper left-hand corner of the thin bar to the left of your main panel which allows you to see more of my screen, and you can, you can control that. Lori, any buzz going on right now that you'd like to cover? No, we're doing just fine, thanks. And, and again, we will try to get time for questions and answers via the chat mode at the end of the, the session today. All right, so uh, the idea, rather than a, a connecting registration and CRM, we're really saying using CRM in the process. And this is really what 
I guess the, the CRM component is about. Uh, they always talk about the 360 view. What are the ways that CRM elements are used uh, to record information about the customer's relationship with you, with you, your organization, your company, your school, your, your university, your, your unit within the college, university, organization that you're a part of? So uh, from, from the contact, uh, contact with customers, and we'll say even contact, well, here we go, contact with potential customers, purchases that the customers might have, tracking their experience through the process, reporting on it, and then using that data to plan to go through the next cycle. So there's kind of the 360 degree view of the customer, and then there's also the, the, 300, the life cycle of the process of what you do in building uh, educational programs and providing them to a particular client base. So again, student manager and our registration software is generally exactly the CRM model is really what a good registration package does. It provides a way for you to contact potential customers. It has a way to contract customers. I would probably flip these two around. Uh, track the purchases of that customer. Uh, help you track the evaluation, run the reports, and then use that data in planning the next round of educational programs or the next round of sales contacts that you might have with that particular student. Now, one of the things I meant to ask, and Lori, we might want to take a break right now before we get a whole lot further to give me an idea. I would like to ask if any of you now, you mentioned some of you that you've got salespeople, if you know if they're using an existing CRM package right now. So Lori, maybe you want to bring up that other poll real quick. We're out of sequence, but let's, let's drop that in. Yeah, let's go for it. Does your CE unit use an external CRM package or system? I always try to give you lots of options and give you something that right. would apply to you. So Right, right. I guess... Uh, you got to pick one, and generally you're gonna you're gonna pick one of those. I suppose I think there's only one, right? So I guess if you've got both CRM and you do some, you've got a package and you use Manager, you would. I do want to know if you've got a if you're paying for or investing in another CRM package. And I guess I don't know if you uh, these are Aceware customers or some folks who might be using other software. But uh, all right, five count guys, five, four. Three, two, one. Lori? You're very good at that. You're drum right roll. with the clock. <laughs> drum roll, please. Well, there you go. OK. All right. So a lot, there are a few using manager. I guess I'm uh, encouraged to say there are more using manager as a system than using another commercial one. But again, maybe that's why you're here. Um, all right. So let's kind of keep on going. So. Um, and this is something, whether you're using Aceware or not, is that the package for registration was not designed from the get-go as a CRM package. However, because it is designed to help you capture, view, reference, and report prospects and customers, it really does give you a 360 real-time view of who this student slash prospect is. And again, that is, in my opinion, what CRM is all about. All right, so let's now get to the idea of the nitsy and gritsy, nitsy and gritsy, nitty gritty, as far as how Aceware through its student manager provides that for you. Um, again, primary element is giving you a spot to track the contact information, the history of that student, what are their interests in terms of uh, topic areas, marketing, uh, callbacks, follow-up, and reporting. So that's kind of the nuts and bolts of what it is that we think we give you. And the big, where does it start? It's all about the student. It's all about the prospect. In Aceware, of course, that's the name record. So um, some people say, oh my god, there's so much stuff in that name record. It's just so busy. Well, if you don't have it in there, if you don't track the information, you don't have the data that you might really need for that 360 view of the student. So again, that is all part of the prospect needing to give you a spot, excuse me, allowing you opportunity to store that kind of data 
that can help you make the decision about whether they're a prospect, uh, if they're a student, how best to serve them. And if you want to say sell them more courses, that's fine. Uh, but it's really then you're serving the student. And of course, the prospect and whether the student is uh, the prospect is a person student or the prospect is a company. Um, I, I'm going to ask for a show of hands now. So for those of you who are familiar with this, to the left of your uh, on on the toolbar is a little hand. Raise your hand if your organization does a business to business sales. That is, you sell classes to organizations that you might call them contract sales or in-house training sales. Raise your hand if your program does that. Uh, again, gives you, you guys do, and I'm looking through the list here, quite a few of you do that. So again, in that case then, certainly, um, the firm record. The firm record is a place where you're going to be able to put information about that company as you make calls with them. That will help your staff, fellow salespeople, help you three, three weeks down the road. My poor brain you know, needs notes. I, I don't have perfect memory to know what it was we said, what we promised when we were going to get back to them. So, um, so we've got the person. We've got the company. Uh, and we talk about Lori, lions and tigers and bears and notes. We'd love to think that there would be automatic tracking, and a lot of that is. But basically, some of the some of the real nuances, some of the real value of dealing with a student or prospect is making notes in their in their record that you can refer to when you did something, what you did with them, uh, what their responses were. Uh, and be able to actually track that. Uh, while we're looking at the name record here, this is the name record in a, in a student manager name screen. And it shows you contact history. These would have been notes that a staff member would have written down. The CRM component, this down at the bottom, is what we call the CRM uh, record area. That is automatic. Anytime you make a mailing list, uh, you generate a mailing list. You can log what the mailing list was for. That gets tied to the person record. Every time you do an email blast that comes out of Aceware, you can put in the subject matter of the class, uh, the date it was sent out, and then you can also manually make notes in the CRM component. Uh, my personal suggestion, if you're using Aceware and you've got the CRM, CRM module, is that rather than putting personal notes down in the contact type, put your personal notes up here because it gives you more room to put information in and uh, you're a little more flexible as far as what it is that you might uh, do there. Over here under comments, now this is an example of the, the using comments for a pop-up. But if you remember the special needs area for student manager users, if you put a note in special needs, it will automatically pop up when some other staff member is looking at that particular student's record. And again, note unlimited length memo field. A plethora of comments, a cornucopia. I love it. I love it. So besides the name record comments, you also have the same capability on the course record or the firm record. So for company contacts, as you build company contacts, you can put in notes uh, with the exclamation point if you want it to be a pop-up. Uh, put in notes about that particular company and be able to track information on that company. Um, interest codes, tracking and planning. And we'll, uh, we're going to be going through the slideshow or the, the PowerPoint, and then we're going to jump into a live issue of Manager to be able to show you how that uh, works in an in a, in a, in a interactive mode. So with interest codes uh, for marketing and sales and tra purposes, uh, the idea of the interest codes area on the name record is that you can add, you can create, and you can add an un un can't spit it out unlimited number of topics or subject areas or program potential sales sellable item areas on a person contact record. And again, all of these can be used to indicate a potential sale or a potential interest 
that Bill Clinton is interested in personal finance or communication or a writing program. So as you build new programs, you can use that as a way to market, reach out to them, and send them information that they might be interested in. Uh, so again, that's, that's part of the basis. For student manager users, remember, as long as you enter a subject code under the course, we're now over here on the course screen example, that subject code will automatically drop into the name record when a student enrolls in that class. So it kind of cross-pollinates the name interest codes. Um, one, and then in terms of reporting, we'll talk more about reports later. But uh, one of the special reporting tools is a uh, under the uh, names with codes is a multi-tier uh, analysis where you can take subject codes and then say break down the males and females, break this people that, who are interested, who have said, here are the people who have been interested in ACEWARE topics. 21 were male, 15, the blank means uh, no, no, no gender specified, and 10 of those were female. Uh, here's a zip code breakdown. Here's the type of organization that um, from the, the people from which said they're interested in ACEWARE. So again, reporting that you can use to generate that data. Um, all right, now before we get on into reporting, I want to run back to manager and, and go through the uh, a, a live set. This is a name screen in student manager. Um, Lori, I'm going to take a breath. Any questions, issues? Everybody doing okay? My screen keeping up with you? Everybody's doing just fine. Good. Your all screen right. is a little slow, but it, okay. it seems to be keeping right. up. I'm going to hit, com I'm gonna hit comments history. Bam, comments history. Poor Curtis has no comments history, so I haven't done a very good job in making those notes. Um, but in terms of a place to track the information, we've got the interest codes. Um, one of the things we need to indicate is the idea of a callback. One of the other elements about uh, CRM is being able to promise things to that student and actually you deliver on it. So if you say, well, I promised Curtis that I'm going to do a callback at a certain date, then what I can do is either type in a callback date there, 01, 05, maybe I'm going to do it after the first of the year, and I'll put a callback in there. Or we have shortcut keys, the special button. For those of you, I'm going to ask a question. For student manager users, I'm going to put the hands down. Raise your hand if you have used the special button in the last month. OK, I'm watching you guys. Ra be honest. Raise your hand if you've used that special button in the last month. <sighs> Only a couple of you are at least fessing up to that. So all right, well, the point of the special button, especially for CRM DAO tools, is that it allows you to automatically jump into the contact history to make a note or assign a callback. And those are the two big things that it provides for you. So I'm going to put a callback first. So if I type, or if I touch the callback button, it automatically puts me, I'm logged in as user Chuck, to put a callback in 10 days. Now if I say, well, I want to do it this Friday, I can go back in here and just change that date so that it'll be the 14th uh, and, and just manually type in a date. The other thing, and this is for the managers around there, sales managers there, if you've got, if you're lucky enough, as we said, to have a staff, you can assign a callback to somebody else. So if my best salesperson is Ted, I can have Ted put in his callback so when he logs into ACEWARE to student manager on the 14th of December, Curtis Martin's name will pop up as a person that he needs to call. All right, well, um, let's just play this. Well, if Ted does this, and on the 14th he gets a note to call Curtis Martin, how will he know what he's supposed to do, unless he's really a mind reader? Well, it might be good for you to put a note in there. So if you go to special, put in contact history, the contact history shortcut actually puts in, oh my gosh, it's 12, 12, 12, Lori, I didn't realize that we are on, this is an auspicious day. I've been wanting to do that all day. All day. Okay. On the 12th of uh, December, 
Chuck, which is me, the user, is putting in a note, check with, and I'm going to tell Curtis what he needs to do, or Matt and Ted what he needs to do. Uh, check with, Chuck, check with, te, uh, with Curtis about March programming. So I can either put a note for the staff member, uh, you can put a note in there as far as what it is you've talked about, you know, you're proposing a huge contract with this, that, or the other. You can do that. Uh, and then when this name pops up in the pop-up list, uh, Ted, the staff member, is able to look at the history and see any notes in there about what they're supposed to do. Now, uh, so that's the callback tool. Uh, how many of you, show of hands again, get the hands down, how many of you use the callback tool? I would assume Joanne and, uh, and Paula. Anybody else use callbacks? Okay, you got Lindsay, Lori, all right, good. So we are getting some folks uh, using the callback tool. And again, whether that is a sales purpose or whether that's customer service. Maybe the student wants to know if they can get a refund and you've got to check with the bursar or check with some supervisor to find out if they'll give them a refund. Uh, you put a note in there for the student to tell them when they're going to call them back. That is customer service. I mean, that's part of the relationship system. You could put a note in there, uh, you know, back to comments again. Need to check to check uh, with Dr. Dr. X about the refund. So again, what is it they're supposed to do? Now, uh, one of the other elements about the name record as far as tracking uh, the contacts with the student, we said the callbacks. Uh, one of the other ones is uh, documents or reference docs. If you are making proposals, and this is again, if you're a salesperson writing a proposal to give to somebody, you can actually reference the proposal through the document linking tool. And basically, in the additional documents area, you can cross-reference to that particular person. And again, I'm going to break some rules here. Marketing, uh, let's find a document here, Aceware 101 Doc. Care to comment? This is an example of a reference doc. And what that, what that allows you to do is tie to a person in, in Student Manager some document. It could be a proposal. It could be a pro forma application form that they've sent in to get a grant for some program that you might want to keep track of. Um, once that's done, we'll say this so you can go back to it, you can actually right mouse click on that, right mouse click on the document, and you can actually, it'll use, it's using Microsoft Office uh, tools, you can actually link to that document and say, oh yeah, that's what we promised to sell Curtis, is this particular thing about what Acework can do for him. So again, that's part of the uh, tool set that for contracts, proposals, um, it's, it's excellent. Um, and the interest codes over here on the right, uh, I'm going to now switch, we're talking about coding, to um, the, uh, well, I'm going to hold off on that for right now. Uh, Lori, any questions beginning to buzz related to how, I do, how we're doing this or our recommendations are on that? No, we're doing pretty we're well. We're doing good. Okay. And again, we'll hopefully be good in time. We're getting uh, to get to, okay, so we've got the CRM, we've got the callback. Uh, and in terms of the firm, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Um, courses taken, again, getting into uh, from the things you can know about a student. You talk about that 360 view. Uh, let's just kind of look at an, a person record. Uh, there is an add date. So you know when was this record added into the system? Who was the user that added that record? When was this record last updated? Who was the user? This is the staff user now that updated that record. How many classes have they taken? What were the classes? You can click on courses taken and be able to get a quick view of the classes that were taken. How did they find out about this program? Hopefully that's one of the things that you're tracking. 
what was the marketing source that brought the name into the system? That is source code. So again, source code is a place where you track the marketing, the promotional effort. Maybe you, if you're doing sales uh, staff, you'll have as a source the actual name of the staff member who might have brought this contact into your database uh, so that you can record. Well, uh, that Lori out there is really bringing in a lot of people. They were XX number of people coded as her source, that she was the bringer-inner. How's that, Lori? The bringer-inner. The bringer-inner. Uh, the bringer-inner into, into this particular program. Who is the one that added you into this poker game here? So, uh, again, information about the person. If you're trying to do full circle view of the student, you're going to want to find out, well, gosh, is Curtis Martin a training director? Is he a uh, technician? Is he the boss, the big CEO, the big dude? Uh, so again, the idea, is this an administrator? Is this an executive? Uh, you know, what is their role in this particular organization? Uh, that's what the occupation field is supposed to do. Organization type here is, again, for you as a group, as a school, as an organization, what type of business does this represent? Well, Acme Cleaners would be a service, probably not retail, it would be a service industry. They do servicing, they do cleaning of actual offices rather than a, uh, a cleaner that's a, um, uh, you know, like a dry cleaner. So again, places for you to store data that will help you, help your marketing people if they're a marketer, yeah, or if you're the marketer, or help a person who is dealing with that student. Curtis is in saying, well, let's put him, he's an administrator. Curtis is saying, I want to take a course with you. They can bring up Curtis's record and say, well, let's see, you're in a service industry. You are an administrator. Well, we have, OK, executive leadership. We have supervising employees. We have uh, accounting for non-accountants. It helps you service that student by because you know about them, you know a little bit about them, you're able to help them better interact with your organization, get what they want, and hopefully have a better experience in doing that. I, it's, like I said, it is a, it's a frame of thought, it's a method of operation, rather than two pounds of software that you add and you heat it 350 degrees and it's done. You know, it's, a, it's an ongoing process. So, uh, all right, anybody? Arguing, commenting, nothing going on, Lori? I want to pick a fight with somebody. No. Oh, all right. All right, so that is the name record um, tracking. Uh, we, I punched that tracking business. So all right, let's get back to the slideshow here then. Oh, reporting, measuring what it is you've done. Well, uh, Aceware itself, we think, has tons of reports, actually. 300 plus in advance. And one of the big ones is, who are your customers now? And so again, under the statistical reporting, we have the performance reporting. We call Top Dog the best customers. Uh, other, other specialty reports, and I'm going to roll back to manager, would be tracking reports. And we talked about the source code. Uh, reports, and this is where that report came from, if you're not sure. Statistics, names, demographic summary. That is that top dog report. So, no, I'm, I'm, I lie. That was a, this area, wrong report. So statistics, names, performance sorting was the one that Lori had on the screen there. That's the top dog. The one I'm going to show now is an analysis. So whatever you're recording about your customers, your students, you can run reports on it. Statistics, demographic summary. We had a customer that's used Aceware for 20 years, and the person didn't know about statistical reports. So I, I, I said, well, I've heard it. Well, a lot, they just don't. OK, so source code. If we wanted to know what was the promotion, who was the sponsor that brought names into the system, we can use source code as the statistical variable. We decide. How far back, what's the data set we want to use? This is the query or filter side. We want to look at all names. This is the whole tomato. Skip the money because we're just looking at this. So this tells us how many different people got in our database because of these promotions. 
16 of them were referred by friend. This is a dummy database, but that's probably fairly accurate. A lot of your students, hopefully, are being referred by good customers, people who like your product. But then what other things you're doing, what of these things uh, are you getting the good bang for the buck in your promotion costs, and you're going to do more? Um, so again, part of the part of the report set in there. Uh, best customers, uh, special tools. Now again, besides the reporting, and and again on the reporting side, I'm going to jump back to it. You know, there are 84 reporting areas that will do that. Uh, there are some report uh, areas under. One line, one reg, deadbeat that are statistical reports, such as uh, first time enrollee, uh, life history reports modeled after some of the learn reports, prior year growth reports, um, code analyzer. This was the code analyzer. Actually, this I said the uh, the previous example that Lori had on the slides. Uh, this is actually it's not a deadbeat, not named with codes. Code Analyzer is the report that uses, allows you to run a multi-variable, how this is, multi-variable analysis of information in your database. Again, it ain't, it ain't SPSS for you serious data crunchers, but it does provide you some good ways to look at data within, uh, within your database. So again, multiple reports in there that you can use to help yourselves out. Special tools. All right. One of the special tools for me is NameFinder, F5 key. All right. Well, I want to do the show of hands, wake people up. Raise your hand if you've used F5 in the last month. All right. Way to go, Joanne. Yeah, we got a couple. Got it, Jim? Yep, 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 yep. All right. Again, and I guess if you haven't been doing a lot, the big deal for me about F5, and we're going to get to live on that, is that no matter where you are in the system, pressing the F5 key brings up the name lookup tool. All right, what's the big deal about that? Well, the name lookup tool lets you look up people in the database based on bits and pieces of data rather than having to have a last name, first name, firm name, zip, you know, some more particular. So if I say that if I know that I wanted to find a uh, Lindsay, I don't think I've got a Lindsay in here. Sorry, Lindsay. No names. Well, let's find a Charles here. F5 again. C-H-A-R-L-E-S. Okay, we got a couple of Charleses. So you, it, it, you're able to go in and look up names by bits and pieces, find that name, and then go on about your business. The other thing about that particular report that is nice is, as we said, you can be in the middle of doing anything in the system and bring up F5 and say, I want to find all of the people who have an Aceware email at Aceware. And maybe I've coded them as Aceware the company, maybe not. But if they have an Aceware email address, I can probably guess they work for Aceware or did and still retain their email address. So it gives you quick ways to look. And then again, finally, you can actually do export it to Excel. You have some options as to how you sort that. So again, and even some custom elements down here. Match a custom condition. You can view additional fields. Uh, it, it is, if you're not using that and you need to look up information about people often, hit that F5 key and take a look around. Uh, a tip under the help guide now is under the help guide now is an F1 key or a link to all the keyboard, well, most all, the major keyboard shortcuts. So here's a shortcut to the shortcuts, uh, F1 key or under help. So you can see, OK, F5, there's person locator, all the different tools that are available to you in the system. OK, uh, the F5 key, name finder, the idea is looking up data to find that person so you can uh, help them out. Mass email wizard, the ability to do mass emails within the system. Lori just gave me up something I did not realize, that in the, new, in the mass email wizard, you can now generate an HTML email without knowing HTML by cheating. No, 
go into catalog, to the catalog code area, create a dummy catalog code course, dummy catalog code uh, method of making an H HTML email. I should have had this done. I, but this is a fancy HTML email. So when I do that, I click the generate HTML, and now I can say, well, I want this to be, I want to edit this text. I want this to be big. I want it to be bold. Oh, maybe I want to add, a, uh, add, a, add, a, add an image in there. So I can put in a link to an image. Basically, when you save this then, done, yes, we want to save this, it will create HTML copy which you can copy and paste into the email blast element. Tech, now, are you using text only, or did you create a text file, Lori? Uh, I actually created a text file. And you did a message text and just pasted it in. But the point is, if you would like to get fancier emails and you're sending out mass emails, you can do that by using the HTML generator within the catalog builder. So again, that that'll be in our tips of the week. In one of the we've got we've already got our idea for the next uh, webinar uh, for a, for the for the for start of the next year. Um, e emergency email the emergency email element to be able to help you send quick notices to students. Um, and again, I'm trying to think with the other special tools in the system. Uh, F5. I'm trying to think. Uh, uh, the reminder, student reminders. Did I ask about student reminders? I can't remember. Anyway, uh, Lori, any elements about that may like relate to other aspects of the tool set that I'm not covering or forgetting to cover? Uh, I think we're that's about, about ready it. to get into general Q and A. Okay. Um, all right. So let's go into. Um, this business about, and again, we, we, we've talked about uh, the, the, you know, the packages that are out there, the lots of them there. Why do we focus on utilizing the CRM versus just buying the, uh, a regular system that is designed from the get-go for, for CRM? Uh, you all know I have a, a little bit, I have a dog in the hunt here, I have a dog in the fight, uh, and you'll note, buying, okay, you'd have to spend more money. Learning, you have, you have another software you have to learn. Double entering data, and yeah, you'd probably have to double enter data into another tool. So, what are the reasons? Um, and again, this is this is kind of why. Whereas you might get a hundred percent of what's possible with CRM, if you can get to the eighty percent level, uh, I'm a firm believer in the eighty twenty rule. You know that twenty percent of your activity generates eighty percent of your business and to focus on what are those 20% things that you do that you can get a great deal of benefit from without having to spend another 80% of effort to get only 20% more return. Um, so uh, this, is, this is it. The history is already in your registration package. Data date activity is in there because people use the system every day. Um, you have only one system. So there's only one system to maintain, pay for, and learn. And again, tied to that is that it lets you, it, again, if your system has the tools to give you parts of this, learning to get 80% out of your current system and the other 2080 deal is a lot of software, whether it's Aceware, Word, anything else, people only use 20% of its capabilities. So if you were to spend a little bit more effort learning about using the CRM tools, having a system in place to put it into play, you can get more bang for the buck out of the system and the money you've already got invested in it. All right, the key to CRM success. And, and, and uh, the, the bottom line in this is, again, the story about expecting a software tool, whether it's a CRM package, whether it's Aceware's registration, whether it's uh, whatever, 
that you're going to expect that to fix your problems or to fix everything ain't necessarily so. And so when you talk about the three W's, we're talking about the will, the way, and the wanda. Okay. I think everybody knows what the will is. The will is the institutional, organizational commitment to, to say we're going to start really trying to do a good job of CRM. The way, well, the way I'm going to contend that you can use your registration software, particularly student manager, to be able to track the kind of data that will help you do good CRM. And the WANDA, who wants to tell me what the WANDA is? Give me a, anybody want to see who the WANDA is in this case? All right. Lori, I don't know if people answered, but. The WANDA is you. It's you, the user. It's the staff member who is in there dealing with the slings and the arrows and the phone calls and the bosses who are badgering them to do this and do this and do that. Are they going to write down? Are they going to write down in the record? And again, you got to get, are they going to write down in the record the information they need uh, that, that people need to have in order to know uh, about this student and how best to serve them. So that's the WANDA factor, which is basically the commitment of the employees in the organization to use whatever tool they've got to, for the benefit of the students, for the benefit of the, of the, of the mission and the goals of the, of the organization. So um, I do have an example that I'd be happy to show you of the, uh, how we use Student Manager uh, here at Aceware to actually do sales and tracking, but I'm, let's go ahead and get to some questions, and if we have time, I'll do that. Otherwise, I want to make sure we get the questions taken care of. So, Lori, what's out there? Well, one of the things that we missed when we put this together, we didn't talk about the new credential tab, which is another way to serve your customers. Yeah, and again, uh, for those of you that haven't got uh, haven't got to 7.2a yet. On the student manager name screen now is a new tab called credential. Let me get to my record in the database. So the idea is that you can add uh, different bits of information about that particular person, uh, historical elements, third party elements, uh, and you get to define what is the category. It's a class, a contract, a friend to Chuck encounter, job, test scores. Basically, again, it's more places for you to store data about the people. So, okay, um, other questions? Thanks, Lori. Good, 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 good note. Can you link a document to a firm similar to the document link in a name? No. Um, what you would need to do uh, would be to tie a name to the firm. So I'm going back to my Acme Industries here. And again, the firm is kind of the... Uh, the firm is kind of the mother. The firm is kind of the mother element to this. So Curtis Martin is is the contact, and we might say we ought to put in there. He's the head uh, training train train trainer or HR manager. So we know what he is. That we would put those contacts into a name record that is tied. Now you can also cross reference the firm, and I'm going to bring up that firm record. So that in the firm note for the student, you can put the comments in the firm, and you can also put in on the firm. Uh, you can go to the firm record and look at if they've got contracts. You can look at registration history, all registrations, aging, billings, and you can see all the transactions that students from that firm have taken with Aceware. But no, the, the, the document link needs to be to a contact name who would be the lead contact at that particular firm. Good job. <laughs> kind of uh, I ducked around that a little bit. Yeah, you did, but that's OK. <laughs> um, do you have, we talked about this before, a, a quick action plan for 2013? I do not, and I, I, I was going to say in terms of you had offered that at the end, and I, I don't have one. I guess as far as if you if you do not have uh, if if you're trying to do CRM CRM elements, it's I would just say use the force 
that, that the two big things that I would look at would be this idea of being able to do callbacks, making sure, making sure that you've got notes in their contact history so that you can reference that. Um, the other big deal, and let me go ahead and I'll bring up the the Aceware. Here we go. Um, here's an example, and this is kind of showing the laundry here, but this is my list of callbacks. Now these are a lot of people that we've been to conferences that I've got names from that I need to be calling back to see about either some business or potential sales with them. Now, in terms of looking at the person, and I think we've got somebody here from Baldwin Wallace. So I'll pick on I'll pick on uh, Donna Van Roy. Um, Donna actually is a customer now, but she's been in uh, the system for quite a while. So I this is how we store data about customers and potential customers in Aceware. I put down the source code. How did I connect with Donna? Well, she's been going to Ochia, the state meeting, for years, from 2002. I indicate her, 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 her occupation. She's a department head. What type of organization she's with. She's a university continuing ed organization. I indicate that she used to use a program called PeopleWare. I indicate that she is the head CE person on the campus. Um, and then in the notes area, you can see the notes that we put in there as what we've done with her. So I can reference if Jason, who is the normal tech, is out, I can look it up and see what's going on. On the additional notes, and we didn't talk about this, but would be looking at adding codes to your name records as part of your, your plan, if you would. Make sure that you've got code areas that can help you in the analysis of your, of your if you're doing marketing with Aceware, with your marketing. One of the ones that we do is we say, what is their interest level? And we create an arbitrary one to five. Five is very interested. One is that, yeah, they're probably not real interested. Three is midpoint. And obviously, a four or three is more interested than not. And, and two is uh, uh, probably not so much interested. Uh, they, haven't been, they haven't told us to go take a hike, but they're not really a hot prospect. So again, that you go in and you set up the user-defined fields, if you've got some that you're not already used, to track data that can help you in doing the analysis of your, um, of your students. So that would be my shot. I would welcome comments from folks uh, in the list if there are others who are doing um, uh, using manager or elements or using a third-party system that they say, you know, hey, I bet I could use this in manager and, again, have the whole thing integrated together. So um, Lori, other comments, questions? We're, we I managed to kind of get it. back on schedule. I think that's about it. And we are at the witching hour. The witching hour. Well, again, um, we really have appreciated the chance to uh, work with you all this year. Uh, we want to definitely wish you all a very happy new year in 2013. And again, we've already got Lori and I, we've got a, we haven't titled it yet, but he's going to be unwrapping late Christmas presents we'll have for some new goodies that we're really excited about after the first of the year, or as Lori said, uh, New Year's New Year's Eve droppings or New Year's Eve <laughs> candy that were under the couch. Oh, that's that's not a pretty sight, you know. New Year's Eve candy that was hidden in the back of the back behind the lamp that we can pull out and snack on after we've survived the holidays. So sounds good. All right, everybody, thanks so much. You have a wonderful holidays, and um, if we can answer questions, if you'd like to talk about how you can use that, uh, the CRM components to help your organization with sales, uh, give Lawyer I a call. Get a hold of your tech. We would love to help you, uh, again, get your best bang out of the buck and uh, get more sales, more customers in 2013. Lori, again, thank you. We will see you all later. Have a good, have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.